Hello everybody and welcome back to the Forza Horizon 5 Rally series. Today we're going to be building the Lancia Delta Integrale. So every once in a while I like to build an actual rally car for our rally series. A lot of the vehicles that I build are trying to find what could be a unique different rally car, something you might not think about. But every once in a while I like to build something that is an actual rally car at heart. And the Lancia Della Integrale is one of my favourites of all time. We've already taken the Lancia 037 down the rally course. It's sat in 20th place at the moment at a 218.035. So hopefully we can make it a little bit faster than that. Of course, that vehicle was rear-wheel drive. The Delta Integrale is all-wheel drive. So let's go ahead and build this thing up to S1 class. We're going to be keeping the all-wheel drive drivetrain. Uh, now, we will have to go for an engine swap, probably. I'm going to go ahead and build the thing first and then see if we need to do an engine swap. I like to keep the standard engines in most of the vehicles unless we need it for the PI. If you haven't seen this series before, then all the vehicles must be built to S1 class. They must keep their stock drivetrain and they are fitted with the rally tyre compound. Now, as far as aero parts, we can add whatever we like, but most of the aero parts lower the vehicle or just increase drag. So, we're not going to go for any spoiler options. We'll go ahead and fit some mud flaps. It makes it look a bit more rally-like. And, of course, we can go for some rally lights. Not too keen on the roof intakes. They don't look great, but we'll go for some rally lights. It'll make this thing look more like a rally car. Of course, that does add a bit of weight, but... We're going for sort of looks and functionality at the same time. Now, like I said, all the vehicles are fitted with the Rally Tire Compound, now known as the Off-Road Tire Compound. Um, we can fit whatever size wheels we like to this thing. Um, sorry, tires. Um, we're going to go for the widest possible. We haven't been upgrading the wheels. We're just going to leave the standard wheels. Now, we can increase the track width if we want to which I'm just going to do a very slightly. Uh, we'll just go for like one click with those. It's just going to make the vehicle a little bit wider, a little bit more stable, um, and hopefully stop us from flipping over. The last few vehicles that I've been driving have been all off-road, big, um, sort of lifted vehicles. We've had a couple of 6x6. Six six. The International Scout we had in the last episode, we got up onto two wheels. So I'd like something that's a little bit more planted this time. We'll go ahead and upgrade the clutch and we will increase the transmission. We'll go for the race transmission, carbon fiber drive shaft, and we want to fit the rally differential. Then we'll go ahead and upgrade the brakes. So we're going to go for race brakes. We're going to go for that off-road springs and dampers, which does raise the car very, very slightly, almost an inch higher. We're then going to go ahead and decrease the weight as much as possible. We're just over a ton in this thing, so that isn't bad. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and fully upgrade the engine. Now, I don't know if we're going to be able to get this thing up to S1 class just through increasing the engine. I don't think so, but we'll give our we'll give our best. We'll give it a try. We'll see what we can do. Um, it's going to be very close, actually. Upgrading the turbo should do it. Yes, it has. Now, of course, there is the race turbo with anti-lag available. And if I was building this for online races, I would add the anti-lag because, of course, that is better. Um, but the rules of this series, we started this series before anti-lag was an option. So it would be unfair to the previous vehicles to use the anti-lag. So we're just going to fit the race turbo and then we'll go ahead and upgrade all the intercooler, the oil cooler and, of course, the race flywheel we're almost at 500 horsepower uh, we weigh just over a ton 
and we've got about 450 foot pound of torque so this thing is fairly lightweight it's going to have a reasonable amount of power and the all-wheel drive means we'll be able to get that power to the ground so there we go there are statistics i'm going to go ahead and tune the vehicle now get this thing ready for off-road and of course fit a cool racing livery right our first run in the martini racing lancia delta integrally it gets off the line absolutely fantastically the all-wheel drive of course will help that now let's see how it deals with the bumps down the straight here gonna break early for that corner there it gets turned in absolutely fantastically you can actually see the front wheels just gripping as we turn into the corner there pulling the front end round pointing that nose in the right direction a little bit of a wiggle on the exit of the water splash there gotta slow down early through there because most of the cars do get a little jump cutting across the grass slightly but that's okay this thing does feel slightly underpowered we've got a little bit of a slide coming out of there on the grass this is going to be more of a shakedown run just to see how the lancia gets down the course a little bit bumpy through there we could definitely have softened the suspension a little bit more but it's not terrible coming into the hairpin now it just rotates beautifully through there a little bit of oversteer to get us through is perfect no air time on the jump now let's see how it copes up the hill here it does feel slightly underpowered as i said it seems to get all of the power in the top end obviously this thing is turbocharged and supercharged for those of you who don't know so we've got the supercharger helping us with that low end grunt and the turbo really kicking us in the guts in those high RPMs. Coming through the corner there, not too bad, a little bit of a slide. It just feels very, very smooth. It's very easily controlled. Coming through these corners, that little bit of oversteer just helps us get through there absolutely beautifully. But unlike the International, it's not oversteering massively it's not sliding through the corners and we cross the line with a very respectable time of 2 minutes 11.899 and that is going to put us just behind the Ford F450 Super Duty in a 14th place and there's definitely some room for improvement there i'd like to get this thing sort of just above the velociraptor if possible just behind the subaru 22b i think that would be a respectable lap time for the delta but let's see we've got a couple more attempts to put down a good time okay here we go again we get off the line fantastically it handles the tarmac section very very well of course it's quite low to the ground compared to some of the vehicles we have been driving in the previous few weeks now coming into the first corner here we were a little bit late on the brakes i think there but that front wheel drive pulling us through the corner nicely all wheel drive in this vehicle is just fantastic it's very very smooth the delta you just can drive this thing with one finger if you wanted to now remember to slow down for that corner obviously the jump there when the wheels are in the air they're not putting the braking force down to the ground i'm gonna leave it in four through there we get a big slide which could take away a few tenths but it did seem like the faster angle through there most of the vehicles get a slide on that corner anyway slowing it down ready for the hairpin here we go and knock it down to third for the hairpin and that bias to the rear wheel drive does just give us enough slide to rotate perfectly through the corner this thing is so well set up i have to say obviously it is a born and bred rally car the lancia delta has won many World Rallycross Championships in its time. It has that rally pedigree. 
and it's showing that here now. One thing's for certain, it's going to be faster than the 037. And the all-wheel drive, of course, will be helping that. Coming up to the last couple of corners now, it's just getting through these absolutely beautifully. Just a little bit of a slide, that's okay. That's what we want, just a little slide to get us through there. But we don't want to go backwards through the corner. And coming across the line, it is an improvement over our la last attempt, but not by very much. Just a couple of hundredths of a second faster than our previous lap time. A 2.11.031 is going to keep this thing in that 12th position. Oh, actually, we have beaten the Ford f450 super duty we've climbed up one position we're now behind the international scout from the last episode so let's see if we can at least beat the international scout um i don't think we're going to beat the velociraptor but we'll see what we can do okay here we go it's going to be all about the launch at the start we get a good launch straight up into the second gear Hug the apex on the tarmac to pick up as much time as we can. We just need a couple of tenths to get it into the tens. Get it slowed down early for this corner and rotate it through there nicely. You can just see how well this thing hugs the apex through there. A little bit of braking and then just use the all-wheel drive to pull it around the corner. And get the nose pointing in the right direction. A little bit of a brush on the fence there that is going to cost us. And then just use the engine braking to slow us down. And then back on the power down the straight. Just going to leave it in fourth gear here. A little dab on the brakes just to help us rotate the back end. And that's what it's all about in this thing. And down the straight here. See how it soaks up the bumps. It's very, very controlled. It soaks them up absolutely fantastically. It looks beautiful just going through the scenery. That Martini Racing livery just looks fantastic. Of course, it's a Lancia, so it has to be a Martini Racing livery. That's the law. Um, no airtime on the jump. That's okay. A little bit of an early turn in on the first corner, but we get it nicely through the second one. Up the hill now, let's see what we can do. This is where it seems to be lacking in power a little bit, but we crest at 120. That's definitely a not slow. This section up the hill here is really where the Lancia is struggling slightly. We're going to knock it down into fourth to try and get that turbo spooled. That's going to help us through the last couple of corners. Bit of a slide through there. I had to have a dab on the brakes because we were sliding wide. Coming up to the final corner. I'm just going to coast through here. And then on the power, down the straight. Knock it up to fifth. Here we go. It's going to be our fastest lap time of the day. A 2.9.864 is going to put this thing in a ninth position just above the Subaru WRX STI hatchback behind the Bentley Continental Supersport. We're literally a hundredth of a second behind the Bentley Continental. Uh, so unfortunately not going to beat the Bentley, but a very, very impressive lap time from the Lancia Delta. Let's see how it racks up against some of our other leaderboard vehicles it's going to be a, a ninth position for the martini racing lancia delta integrally a very very impressive showing it's in the top 10 on our leaderboard which is absolutely fantastic just behind the big bentley continental that thing was an absolute beast as well of course all-wheel drive as well but it did beat the two other rally cars, the Subaru 22B and the Hatchback STI. So I'm very, very impressed with the little Lancia. It's a lovely vehicle to drive. It was so smooth. It turned in fantastically, fantastically well. So would I recommend building this as a rally car? 100%. It's a born and bred rally car, as I said earlier. 
this thing just hugs the apex like nothing else so yes a very good showing from the little ants here hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode we're going to be back next week with another episode of the horizon 5 rally series so if you want to see that then make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any latest videos and don't forget to like this video if you did enjoy and comment below what vehicle you want to see us do in the next episode. But that's going to do it for today. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.